joy, joy, joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I need that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Oh, I really enjoyed a long lie-in today. Oh, and do you know what? It's getting colder and wetter and darker in the mornings, and it's not so easy to get up. Yes, and if it's difficult for us, it must be difficult for the limpets too. I'm sure they're finding it hard on these dark mornings. So tempting to turn over when mummy calls. So true, but it's a nice time of year to see all of the berries on the trees. Oh, and the leaves will be changing colour soon too. Uh, I've already seen a few of them whilst I've been away for a few days. Hmm. When I was a child, I used to really enjoy this time of year. All the hay had been cut in the fields and we could play. And it was so special with all the local produce from the farms being seen in the local shops for sale. We'll soon be having harvest at Tabs again, but it will be very different this year. Yeah, but we can still be thankful for all our food and all our clothes and everything that we have, even if we don't do the same things Mm. this year to show that thankfulness. So what are we going to do? Auntie Kathy won't be able to arrange her tear fund lunch. Oh, yeah. I love the yearly tear fund lunch. Will that also mean less donations for food banks? Hmm. So perhaps we should pray about that. Wonder how the limpets got on thinking about different ways of how to pray for others. Yeah, we've covered quite a few topics about over the last few weeks, haven't we? From patterns of prayer and praise to saying sorry and feeling sad about things. And and last week, we looked at how Jesus prayed for us. Mm. Yes, we still have so much to be happy about. Shall we sing something to show how we feel? Yes, and we can dance about it later, but we're going to sing this time. La, la, la. I love you. Just 
Good morning, limpets. Our reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy. Now, the Old Testament tells us everything that happened before Jesus came to the earth. We're going to read together from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Do not forget the Lord. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase, and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these forty years, to humble you and to test you, in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then, in your heart, that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the hills and the valleys, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. Thank you, Deb, for reading those verses. You know, sometimes it's hard for us to understand everything in the Bible, isn't it, Limpets? And today we've come to the last of our series on prayer. And today we are looking at thanksgiving. Hence, it's a good idea for me to really say thank you, not just to Deb, but to people who do things for us. God did many things in the Bible for people, but sad, sometimes they forgot to say their thank yous. Sadder still is that in some cultures, even today, people are discouraged from saying thank you. That's strange, isn't it? Now then, who noticed this morning, this word came up in what Deb read. And we'll hear it again in the next bit she reads as well. And then there was the word that said, remember and careful. So, just why is it important to remember? Well, the children of Israel were told to remember all that God had done for them, all that God had provided for them. In their 40 years of traveling in the desert. Did you notice in those verses how he provided food for them? clothes for them, and even that their feet didn't swell. That must have been marvellous in the desert when there was hardly anything there. You know, I had to laugh one day when I was reading the Bible one morning, and that was just, oh, after I'd been in Asia for nearly 40 years. Somebody, a few months earlier, had given me a pair of shoes. They'd said to me, Dot, these are too small for me. Would you like to try them on and see if they fit? I tried them and they fitted. So I said, oh, yes, please, I'll have them. 
thing is, in both Nepal and Thailand, where I lived for a long time, the ladies didn't have big feet. They had very narrow feet sometimes. So to buy shoes in the bazaar was difficult. I'd been staying in Kathmandu when I was given that pair of shoes. Mind you, I didn't have them the day she promised them to me because she forgot to bring them to the office the next day. A week or 10 days later, she'd remembered and I was going to have them. You know, I walked home that day from the office. I got into the house I was staying, took my shoe off and guess what? It had broken. The sole and the top of the shoe had separated. Well, why did I laugh? Because I saw the funny side of things. That God provided just as I need it. After I'd been 40 years in Nepal. Just like the promise of those in the wilderness. So I certainly said thank you to my Australian friend that day, but I also gave thanksgiving to God because it really came from him initially. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known to humble and to test you so that in the end, it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember, it is the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers, as it is today. Why do you think God said he was leading them into a land with wheat, barley vines, figs, honey, olive oil, and rocks with iron and copper in them? Well, maybe it's because there wasn't a local supermarket they could run down to. If they wanted eggs or milk or bread, they couldn't just run off to the, the um, shops and buy them because probably there wasn't any shops. Now, I know some people in tabs keep hens. I think it's for the eggs, but I don't think it's because they can't go to the shop and buy them. It's for other reasons. But you see, I lived somewhere once and if I wanted to buy butter, it was like looking for somebody who might be off to London and I'd ask them, can you bring me some butter back? Or if I wanted eggs, I would write to somebody and send a message and say, can you buy me some eggs? And then what they would have to do, well, you'd be surprised. They'd get a piece of newspaper, they'd wrap the egg up, make sure it was safe and it wouldn't crack and put it in a tin. 
And then it would go in a basket and be carried on somebody's back again. If you want to make, if you want some bread, why not buy it? Well, you may not always be able to buy it. And the children of Israel couldn't go down the shop and buy flour. They'd have to grow the They'd have to have the seed, grow the plant, pick it, clean it, take it to the mill, make it into flour, and then cook it with some, perhaps the oil from the olives. And they would need something to cook it with. Well, I remember a day when again, I was going to say, thank you, God, because I'd been out in the bazaar to the shop and there wasn't any flour. But the next day, a lady came into the clinic and she disturbed a prayer meeting and she came in shouting, there's flour come, there's flour come. Wasn't that great? Flower came. Wow, another reason for giving thanksgiving to God. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember, it is the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers, as it is today. That chapter ends with a warning not to forget God because it's God who gives us everything. And if we get so satisfied, we forget God's care, then maybe we'll forget that really these things, food and clothing, really come from God. And so once a year, it's great that we can have Harvest Thanksgiving so that we can remember to say thank you to God for the harvest, for our food, for our clothes and everything, including his love that he gives us. So it's not only our daily bread, but when we ask, we need to say, thank you, God. Hi, Limpets. It's down here from Down Days, and my day for this week is get, as, get all the cola balls out of this pile of whipped cream in a minute. not to forget to say thank you for everything oh yeah and to be reminded of the importance of saying thank you to god as he is the real provider of all that we have and enjoy oh and on that note we've been talking about harvest quite a lot this week and next week the church as a whole is going to be celebrating harvest so we would like to ask you guys a huge huge favor we would love to have some harvest pictures to use in the main service next week, showing the church all the things that we are thankful for. So girls, is there one thing you are especially thankful for this last week that you would like to share with us? Perhaps even an answer to prayer. Well, mine is that I finally got to go on holiday. 
So I am thankful for my neighbours because I left my washing on the line yesterday and it rained. So my neighbours helped me with drying my clothes. Mm. And I'm really thankful for the fact that we have internet and that we can communicate with people all over the world. And I'm thankful that my husband has a holiday and is able to fix up all the things around the house that I've not been able to do. Great. But Naomi, why do we celebrate harvest? What is it? Well, Harvest Festival is a celebration of the food that is grown in our country. It reminds Christians of all the good things that God has given to us. And this makes us want to share with others who are not so fortunate. You may remember from pre previous years in school and at church, bringing in food. Um, with church, we used to bring it in on one Sunday morning and then that food gets given to food bank, which is then shared with those who are hungry and need help. Mm. So it would be a great thing to remind the church, remind people to be thankful for what we do have, because it's going to be a lot harder to bring food in and share food this year. Yeah. But feel free to bring something over to Arkad House in the mornings. Well, ladies, I've really enjoyed our chat this last few weeks and the time that we've been able to have with the limpet. Mm. You know what? So have I. But girls, shouldn't we tell them what's going to be happening in the next few weeks? Oh, yes. Otherwise, they may be wondering where on the earth we've gone. Oh, or even the parents might think their TVs have gone wrong. Or there's something with the internet. Because things were different this year, we didn't stop in the summer. So we're going to stop early for half term. Limpets, and school's not stopping early, just limpets. We're gonna take a short break um, and we're gonna come back to you in a few weeks time. So don't worry, we will be back. We just need a bit of a holiday. And in that time, we're gonna pray for us, we're gonna pray for the video, and we're gonna pray for all of you little limpets as well. It's gonna be really, really, really good. And we're gonna be back better than ever in a few weeks time. And it would be great to hear from you, to know what you've really enjoyed and what you've not enjoyed about limpets these last 13 weeks. Yes, ah, 13 weeks. 13. <laughs> so we can plan towards the future. See you soon. Somewhere. Bye, bye guys. Bye, bye Limpets. Bye. 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 Bye.
people say oh, Say, oh.